Welcome to this video on low poly animal modeling in Blender. Here you can see I've set up a little scene with a few different animals in it. I'm going to be going over my footage for modeling the bear and the fox here, explaining my thought process and how I went about shading and rigging these. Hopefully you'll learn something and hopefully it inspires you to go make your own. It's a pretty simple introduction to modeling really. The first step for me was just collating a board of references on Pinterest. I just searched up low poly animals, just picked anything that looked nice to me and also looked up the particular animals that I was looking to model. So starting with the bear, I'm just going to start trying to model the body shape from this cube using as little geometry as possible. A little modeling tip is you can flatten out faces by selecting them and then scaling on a particular axis that they're lined up to, pressing zero. So in this case, I just pressed X for the X axis and then zero. And depending on the animal, I might start by modeling the face if I want more detail there. And sometimes it takes a couple of tries to find the best place to start. During this phase, I like to constantly look at a reference either on my phone or on a second monitor and just slowly build out the shape of the bear. And to make sure my model's symmetrical, I delete out half of it and then add in a mirror modifier with clipping turned on and that way it will merge the two halves together. And yeah, I just keep taking my time, keep looking at the reference and tweak the geometry until I've, I feel like I've matched the shape well. Another modifier I like to use in low poly modeling is the decimate modifier. And this sort of allows me to take a semi procedural approach to it where I can turn down the ratio on this decimate modifier and that will triangulate my mesh and give it a little bit of randomness that it would take a while to do manually. So I can just sort of focus on keeping my base model quite clean and simple and then the decimate modifier will handle the triangulation and I can control how low poly I want it to be. And all these animals the legs are a bit tricky but I like to start out by just extruding some geometry to get the position right then add shape and form a bit later down the line. Also getting the shape of the joint right where it joins the body is a big thing that I like to get right first. Bears have much bigger and thicker legs than most animals, so getting the size and proportions right is a big part of this, getting this model right, so I'll spend a lot of time on it. But you'll see in other models that I do, I might spend more time on different areas depending on where the focus is. Adding loops like this helps me get a more curved shape on the legs, but it makes it very dense on the top here. So what I like to do instead is actually grab the edge that I want to add an extra loop to and bevel it. This gives me the extra loop but doesn't add more geometry to the top of my mesh. And I just grab these extra vertices it generates, uh, pull them into a nearby neighbor and then merge by distance to get rid of them. And for the tail I just grabbed a single vertex at the back and use Control shift b to bevel vertices. That gave me this diamond pattern that I could then extrude into a simple tail. I always like to look at the legs from different angles and trying to avoid straight lines. It looks a bit robotic that way. Another modeling tip is to double tap G to slide vertices along an edge, which I use a lot during this process. From here I just kept refining the shape, adding more geometry when I needed it. So like with the back leg I extruded it out a little bit more to, to help show a little bit more form on it. For the paws I just extruded down the bottom of the legs the thickness that I wanted the paws to be, then extruded the front faces out and softened the shape a little bit. And that worked pretty well with the decimate modifier. Once I was happy with the body, I just extruded it out and scaled it to make the head, neck and nose as it all sort of follows roughly the same kind of shape. You'll see uh, throughout this I often tab in and out of edit mode to see how what I'm doing looks after it's been decimated and this really defines how I tend to model in this sort of semi-procedural way. 
and to fill in any gaps in the model I usually just do it manually, trying to keep things quad based and organic. For these small round ears I use the same trick as I did with the tail, just bevel a single vertex, extrude and scale it around. I also grabbed the inner face here and used I to inset it and extrude to give it more depth. It's not very prevalent on this model but on the fox model I'll do later that will be much more important. I'm pretty much done with the bear modelling now. What I sometimes like to do at this stage is grab large sections of the animal in edit mode and tweak the proportions slightly looking at reference. Now before I start shading this I actually want to tweak the shape with a little bit more control so I want to change individual polygons and because we're using the decimate modifier I first need to apply it and now you can't apply a modifier at the end of the stack so I'll first have to apply the mirror and then apply the decimate. Now because I had symmetry enabled on the decimate modifier I can go into edit mode and delete out half the bear then re-add the mirror modifier to get an identical result. I'm just going to go in with the knife tool K on the keyboard and define some areas I want to shade like the nose and the eyes. To get a circular shaped eye you can see I first made a diagonal cut then added a vertex in the middle of that cut, filled the faces around it and beveled it twice, first just adding four extra vertices and then beveling those to get a rounded shape. I just used the mouse wheel to add more detail to these second bevels. For my shading I wanted to keep it simple block colours for this style, I just wanted to assign some faces a different colour like the nose and the eyes. I could have done this using material face assignments which definitely would have been the simpler way, but I wanted something that I could potentially easily export to a game engine. So instead I made this RGB texture. Then I just selected all and hit U unwrap to give it some default UVs, then I could grab the faces I wanted to be brown, drag them into the red section and drag the eyes into the green. I could have coloured the image directly but I wanted the flexibility of controlling it in Blender for now. So in the node tree I separated the colour and used the different channels as a factor in a mixed colour node. And I didn't do anything fancy with the shader, just turned up the roughness. I won't get too much into rigging seeing as I'm pretty bad at it but I basically just used the Rigify add-on which lets you line up this basic skeleton for a quadruped animal and it will generate a complex rig. Then I just parent the mesh to the rig with automatic weights, play with it and maybe tweak a couple vertex weights if it's deforming weirdly. Occasionally I might have messed up the topology too much and I have to go in and fix some joints manually with some extra loops. But yeah that's pretty much my full process for this style of animal modeling. You can see I play around with the posing here once I have that rig. Now the fox is a very different style of animal and has a bit more detail so I'll go through that now. I started in the same way with a cube but decided to start at the face this time as this was the main feature of the animal. I added in the decimate right away to find the right balance in detail and I'm constantly toggling it on and off. It's really important when you work on the face areas because these are the areas with the most detail. Taking it slow to try and get the head shape correct and feel natural, again always looking at reference on a second screen. For more complex models personally sometimes I like to extrude just parts of it as a plane compared to extruding the whole thing as a volume. Extruded up some ears and used the same inset technique as on the bears but it's much more prevalent here on the fox's ears. When freestyle modelling like this without reference it's important not to rush it and just to let the model grow by small amounts naturally. Trying to avoid parallel lines on the chest, so bringing them to a point to represent the fur a bit more. And now I'd pretty much finished the head, I ended up with this circle that I extruded out to block out the body. For the legs I started the same as on the bear, just grabbed some faces in the right position and extruded them straight down. 
Took me a while to get these front legs to feel correct and connected to the body. The main thing that I learnt was getting the angle right as they come out of the body, just slightly pointed back and not straight down. Also just sliding vertices around to try and make the shape feel more organic helps. In a way, this style of modelling is more akin to freehand drawing, and in that sense it's very fun, but it can also take a few tries to get the right look as I don't have any reference loaded into Blender. I like to slide major sections of the leg around, trying to get the elbow to feel correct. And then once I had that, I just spun the base around to make the paw. Trying to avoid a sort of tubular feel to the body, so I always look at things from different angles, scale parts around to give some curves. Sometimes I like to use the C selection brush to select large parts of the model together and then adjust the proportions. Keeping the back legs fairly flat to start with, as I just tried to get the major shape correct, then I'll extrude it out later. A basic understanding of animal anatomy can really help with modelling them, as even low poly we're still trying to represent the muscles underneath that makes the shapes. Learning from my mistakes on the bear, I try and add enough loops at the joints for when I come to rig this. Play with the ratio on the decimate modified too to reduce the detail a touch. And that's the beauty of having it procedural like this, you can change it at any time. The tail, it was really simple, just extruded the body out, scaled it around to give it the classic fox shape. Now I had the model done, I went through the same process to get it shaded, deleted out half of it after applying everything, and then added the mirror modifier again. Then I scaled him down to real world scale-ish, added some extra detail around the joints again with the knife tool. Loaded in my RGB texture again and started modelling some geometry for the eye. This time I did it a bit differently. I beveled a single vertex and in the menu I changed the profile to a custom and made it a bit more circular. And just cut out the nose with the knife tool again. Then for all the different colours on the fox I just placed those bits of geo in a unique colour channel. Using the knife tool again where I need to define the shape a bit better for the colour. So you can see I'm making everything I want to be white blue, and then everything I want to be brown is green, and then everything orange is red. Then I can separate out the RGB channels again, and use mix nodes to pick my colours in Blender. Again this is a, a bit more of a complex way to do this, you could just do this with material face assignments. Then I just went through the same rigging process, and that's pretty much how I go about modelling low poly animals. So I hope this was really useful to you, and hopefully inspired you to go make some of your own. It's um, It took me a few tries to get these right, but once you get the hang of it, it's a really fun process. And hopefully you could maybe use these in a game, or in a little short film.